These changes that we've made in the last five years have made such a difference to the insect biodiversity that we find on site. I've actually been really, really blown away. I'm Ashley Whitten. I'm a curator of entomology at National Museum Scotland, which means that I'm a caretaker for our rather large collection of over two and a half million insect specimens. I have always been a big supporter of NOMO May and the NOMO movement because I think it's an incredible campaign for raising awareness of the importance of our wildflowers and we really need a huge amount of support if we're going to improve the available habitat for insects and obviously insects are my passion. We're at the National Museum's Collection Centre which is in the north of Edinburgh and our site is pretty unassuming. It's um, an urban plot that is a series of buildings with green spaces laced between them. But we have become a little bit of a green haven for the local wildlife. By participating in the NOMO movement, it's given us this whole opportunity to look at the insect life and our biodiversity right on our doorstep here at the Collection Centre in a totally different way. There had been an interest certainly among staff in participating in the NOMO movement, but really what spurred it on um, was the lockdown periods. It was during this time that the contractors didn't come in to mow the grass and this really displayed a little mini version of what could be. Initially, we really just wanted to see what was here naturally. Uh, the, the site had been manicured for many, many years, so the grass was incredibly short, flowers were not given the opportunity to bloom. We started to see wonderful flowers, things like oxeye daisies, cuckoo flower, lots of things that I know insects love. And so the management plan that we developed is totally rewriting that, and we have transformed the site during the course of the last four years. Instead of the grass being cut, every two weeks. Um, we have just particular areas of the grass being cut. So most of the grassland is left and we just have edges of the green spaces, uh, the perimeter of the site and then designated pathways cut during that growing season. So this is what it looks like in early spring. We've got this plot was one of the plots of winter cover that we left and then we've got this plot over here which would have been cut in the autumn and then just this week we've had our pass freshly mown through the center. So it's, it's been that delicate balance of trying to make sure that we're enhancing the biodiversity but not disrupting any access. It's our native wildflowers that are most important to insects. These are the species that they have evolved alongside. They're the ones that provide them with the exact food sources that they need. We have also done a little bit of enhancement. So we've added primroses and cowslips to give that early supply of nectar and pollen to some of our spring pollinators. And then we've also added yellow rattle. Now that's probably had the biggest impact. The yellow rattle has spread throughout the years that we've been doing this project and it's really made quite a difference. It's affectionately known as the meadow maker sometimes and you can see why. I think my favorite flower is possibly the common knapweed. I really love the bright pop of colour that that gives and seeing a bee really stuck face first deep into the flower, that's really satisfying. Since starting our NOMO movement here at the National Museum's Collection Centre, we've been really delighted with the diversity of insects and other wildlife that we've been recording. Everything from butterflies to moths to beetles, bees, you name it. One of the biggest noticeable differences is the amount of butterflies in recent years. So the adults will really need those floral resources, those flowers to get the pollen and nectar, but their offspring are gonna need some breeding habitat. And those diversity of grasses are really important for lots of our butterflies and moths. Because we've allowed our areas to grow, we found that we have a wonderful population now of small skipper butterflies. As an institution, the NOMO movement really nicely aligns with our aims as well. So we are an institution that researches biodiversity, particularly Scottish insects, that's one of my focuses. And of course, we're very concerned about the environmental and biodiversity crisis right now. So doing something more with our own green space that we have was a really just a natural way forward. Some of my favourite things about us participating in the NOMO movement has been obviously the insects that we're recording now, things that were not here before, that's a win, but also being able to work with my colleagues out on the grounds and just interact in different ways than we usually would definitely has mental health benefits to many of the staff here and our volunteers. 
Also the sounds of nature, so sitting near the meadow on your lunch break and hearing the grasshoppers, seeing the butterflies dance along the meadow, it, it's a really nice experience. And then the other thing is that kind of feeling of satisfaction, knowing that we've made these changes and they've been really positive. Each year is different, so the exciting thing is we don't know what we're going to find and there's always different species of insects turning up and the occasional new plant popping up as well. If I had to list everything that we found, we would be here for a very, very long time. <laughs> um, we've got countless moths, the day flying species like cinnabar moths, burnet moths, poplar hawk moths. That's probably my favorite one because they're really big and you can put them on your face and take a selfie. We've actually recorded 16 species of butterflies on our site during this five year period. Um, obviously they're not all breeding here, but to have that number, that's almost half of the butterflies recorded in Scotland. So that's pretty good going. Um, and probably our most interesting butterfly that we have recorded is the wall, or also known as the wall brown. We've got a diversity of bees, five different bumblebees, um, red mason bees, cuckoo bees, all the bees. <laughs> Um, and then wasps too, the jewel wasps are some of my favourites, but we've also got a number of different parasitic wasps and every year we record more of those. We've got plenty of shield bugs, we've got parent bugs, we've got hairy shield bugs, um, numerous ladybirds and ground beetles, some great predatory species that are really important in providing that balance in the ecosystem. With insects being more plentiful, that's been great for the bird life too. The insectivorous species like tits, we have blue tits and great tits nesting on site and obviously foraging, collecting caterpillars for their young. We can't record everything during the day, so it's been important as well that we set up some camera traps to monitor some of the nocturnal wildlife and predominantly that's our foxes. And we have quite a few urban foxes here and it's lovely to see the footage of them playing in the long grass. Over the years, we have been recording the wildlife on the site. Sometimes we're just doing observational recording, but other times we do need to collect specimens. And unfortunately, this is still a necessary part of entomology. Insects are incredibly small, and sometimes the differences between two species are minute, and they might not even be visible on the outside, so we have to dissect the specimens. So we do still collect a lot of the smaller things, a lot of the flies, a lot of the beetles, they do need to be collected. But that's then adding to the collection here and those specimens can be used for hundreds of years and who knows what questions they might be answering in the future. The biodiversity loss that we're facing and biodiversity declines that we're seeing are a very real and quite scary issue. Now more than ever it's so important that we use any little scrap of space that we can to make things a little bit wilder and support our biodiversity. I really hope that what we've done on our site can show other organisations what's possible Giving power to the flower and encouraging those native grasses can have a huge impact on our insect biodiversity and it's a real easy win.